Everyone, welcome back to a Hardware News Recap for the week. This week, we'll be talking about how Intel is apparently planning to reduce its CPU prices in response to the upcoming Ryzen launch, which would be a big milestone for Intel because Intel is a company that has basically never dropped its prices. So that, uh, well, not for a long time anyway, not for several years, generations. AMD and the X590 story and why X590 is not going to be a thing for this immediate launch. We'll talk about that more as media delivering AMD B550 and A520, as we know them to be named now. Uh, Intel and Samsung are negotiating a manufacturing contract and PCIe 6, along with some more tariff news. Before that, this video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club and their starter set. Get your Dollar Shave Club starter set for $5 by using our link below, available individually for shave, shower, or oral care, or all together in one package. The kits can be customized to your needs with options including toothpaste and a toothbrush, hydrating shampoo, face cleanser and scrubs, body wash, or a razor with cartridges and shaving cream. Convenience is key and care packages can be scheduled to send when you need a restock. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash gamersnexus or click the link below to learn more. So first, a, a quick note, by the time this video goes live, we'll have a video featuring Kingpin on the side channel, and that is uh, a bike check. We look at his electric bike that can go 60 miles per hour. That was when we were in Taiwan. So fun video looking over some bike technology. That'll be on the GN Steve side channel and I'll link the video below if you're interested in it. But it does feature uh, overclocker and 2080 Ti Kingpin namesake Kingpin himself. So that should be fun for you. Uh, Intel CPU reduction in response or price reduction in response to Ryzen. A story went up on Tech Power Up and Digitimes on Friday that indicated a CPU price reduction by Intel. Motherboard manufacturers have reportedly been told by Intel that the CPU prices should reduce between 10 and 15%, depending on the CPU SKU. And uh, we don't have a list of which ones will get the 15% cuts at this time, but it's probably going to correspond with whatever Ryzen processors are nearby and how far Intel needs to come down to get close to those prices. Maybe not match, but we'll see. So for reference, the 9900K is on Amazon in the US at time of filming for $485. A 10% reduction would bring it to $436-ish. 15% might bring it down close to 410 to 420, depending on which retailer you look at. Some of them are, are more uh, at $500 instead of 485. So that would get it sort of close to the 3700X and 3800X, which are the eight core competitors to Intel's 9900K. Those would be $400 for the 3800X. It's, it's quite distant from the 3700X, actually, which is $330. But the 3700X, uh, it, it has a cash difference versus the 3800X. So this time AMD's split them up in a way that it, you can't just buy the lower down SKU and overclock it and get everything you had with the higher end SKU, so far anyway. But uh, you can still overclock it. And aside from the other differences, you can get the frequency probably, we would assume, almost certainly up to the 3800X. There's no reason that wouldn't be true. So uh, Intel's going to have a hard fight ahead of it. <laughs> AMD is extremely competitively positioned for this launch. And a price reduction is, for the first time in a while, is genuinely necessary now. Intel doesn't have a new product coming out for a long time. The 9900KS is the next closest thing, and that won't be out till probably towards the second, well, towards the end of the year, probably third quarter. But uh, yeah, so it, it's it's needed, the price reduction. And if you look at old Intel CPU inventory on Newegg and Amazon, you'll notice that almost none of them have been reduced in price over time. The retailers don't get any, as far as we're aware, uh, don't get a, uh, enough of a a buyback or any buyback, which sometimes the suppliers will offer for old inventory. So you end up seeing things like a 7700K for sale at roughly the same price as when it launched. So this will be a big move for Intel. And depending on what gets 10% and 15%, it might not even be enough. So we'll see how the competition stacks up in our review. Uh, we are getting the processors in and obviously check back for that. And the X590 is actually X570. So this is something we received word on from a couple of the motherboard manufacturers when that story went live about a week ago about an alleged AMD X590 that was in the BIOS entry and some of the motherboards out there. So our understanding, what we were told, is that X570 was originally going to be Gen 3 
PCIe and X590 would have been Gen 4. And all of this is long before launch. We're talking more than six months ago. So this happens all the time where stuff changes. It's just that typically the public doesn't really hear about it in any in any fashion. So that was the plan. Obviously, X570 ended up being Gen 4. So X590 didn't need to exist anymore. There is a separate Threadripper chipset. We don't know the name of it yet. It may very well end up being X590, but that would be different from the one that was rumored. And it would be different because there would be an additional four uh, Gen 4 lanes going up to the CPU. So you, you move from uh, four down and upstream to eight between the CPU and the chipset. And that would be the change for Threadripper. Originally, it was planned for X570, and then it was changed later. So yeah, X590 won't exist in the form that it was rumored, but there will be a Threadripper chipset. It'll be an extra four PCIe lanes to the CPU, and it's not going to be for the AM4 socket, just X570 for AM4. NVIDIA to support ARM with CUDA acceleration. At the International Supercomputing Conference, NVIDIA announced that ARM will receive the support of the full CUDA software stack with a focus on AI and high-performance computing. NVIDIA will work with ARM to power more energy-efficient supercomputing and works toward ushering in exascale computing. NVIDIA will open its stack and offer ARM support for NVIDIA CUDA X AI, HPC libraries, AI frameworks, PGI compilers, and more. With this announcement, NVIDIA is officially supporting all major CPU architectures at this time. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huan cited the need to address a future power limit as computing advances. Quote, supercomputers are the essential instruments of scientific discovery, and achieving exascale supercomputing will dramatically expand the frontier of human knowledge. As traditional compute scaling ends, power will limit all supercomputers. The combination of NVIDIA's CUDA-accelerated computing and ARM's energy-efficient CPU architecture will give the HPC community a boost to exascale, said Jensen Huan of NVIDIA. NVIDIA's official support for ARM is yet another move into the realm of supercomputing for NVIDIA. The company most recently purchased Mellanox, an Israeli chip maker that provides server and networking hardware, as well as interconnect technology. Last week, we talked about why the AMD X570 chipset is more expensive than X470. We also talked about why the motherboards seem to be more expensive on average, and on average they are. There are some cheaper ones than the high-end ones that we've looked at on the channel, but they're still a bit higher overall. So that discussion, no doubt, led to people asking when B550 and the follow-up to A-series chipsets, which we think is called A520 right now, but the name may change, uh, where th when they will arrive is the question. The tentative answer, as we said at the end of last week's news episode, is supposed to be for, the, uh, for 2020. And it looks like Digitimes has repeated that. We, we heard first half of 2020 when we originally spoke about this at CES, and I recapped this last week too, and then Digitimes has heard now early 2020 as an update, so a bit earlier than what we originally heard. Uh, Digitimes also reported that as media is currently working on schedule to finish the tape outs for the new chipsets, the B550 chipsets and A520 chipsets for silicon by end of year. AMD opted to design X570 in-house. It's actually repurposing an IO die from Ryzen and using that for the chipset. And this was a departure from the Asmedia-based chipsets in the first and second gen, or well, two, yeah, first and second gen Ryzen or Zen Plus for the architectures. Asmedia will be responsible for AMD's budget chipsets and may even net some X570 orders once its PCIe 4 solutions are finalized. There's also speculation that B550 and A520 will skip PCIe 4 connectivity instead of favoring 3.0 in an attempt to meet the pricing criteria. And this is also something we've heard, by the way. So PCIe Gen 3 does reduce the price requirement, reduces the power requirement, and simplifies motherboard design. It's already been uh, expected that AMD's entry-level boards will be more expensive, comparatively speaking, than the past. But sticking with PCIe Gen 3, we'll see what happens. Uh, we, we'll have six plus months to wait. So we'll just wait on that. Uh, that said, it wouldn't be surprising to see AMD trying to keep the pricing more affordable on the B and A series chipsets. Intel and Samsung are negotiating a manufacturing contract, but it's not for CPUs. Rumors began to swirl earlier this week, indicating Intel and Samsung were in talks to have Samsung manufacture Intel's 14 nanometer rocket lake. Unsurprisingly, those rumors have been rendered false. 
What does appear to be in negotiations between the two chip makers, however, is chipset manufacturing. According to Tom's hardware sources, the talks between Intel and Samsung are centered around simpler chips, such as chipsets, although which chipset and which node would be manufactured are currently unspecified. Intel has previously outsourced this type of manufacturing before, and as it rolled back certain chipsets to 22 nanometers, it would make sense for Intel to continue to offload lower margin products and focus on correcting its 14 nanometer shortage. Later this summer, we'll see the first PCIe 4.0 consumer motherboards hit the market, followed by PCIe SSDs. Additionally, just last month, the PCI SIG ratified the PCIe 5.0 specification. Now, PCI SIG is already looking down the road towards the next specification, PCIe 6. There was a long gestation period between 3.0 and 4.0, and that's something that PCI SIG is aiming to avoid with future protocol updates. PCI 6.0 is more in a draft state currently. It is not ratified. PCI SIG hopes to have the spec finalized by 2021, and as has been the case with the upgrade cadence, 6.0 would double the bandwidth of previous versions. Based on full duplex, the bandwidth progression looks like it should be, uh, for a 6, x16 slot anyway, it should be PCIe 6.0 at 128 gigabyte per second if it persists. Uh, so that's the draft state right now. Again, not ratified, not finalized. Uh, for reference, 5.0 is 64 gigabytes per second, 4.0 would be 32 gigabytes per second, 3.0 is 16 gigabytes per second. These are all by 16 uh, and so forth. So PCIe 6.0 will also be capable of 8 gigabyte per second speeds for an X1 slot or by one. PCIe 2.0 by 16 wide slots delivered that bandwidth in 2007, for reference. PCIe 6.0 will also see the introduction of a new signaling technology going from a non-return to zero or NRZ to a pulse amplitude modulation or PAM4. As Anantech notes, the signaling technology isn't unlike that found in MLC NAND. Anantech also offers a thorough technical breakdown if that's of interest to you, and we'll link that in our show notes below. We could see PCIe 6.0 available for general consumers as early as 2023 if hardware vendors move just as quickly to adopt the new standard as they have in the past. PCIe 4 was finalized in 2017, and we're just now getting ready to see PCIe 4 products in 2019. And it may go without saying, but price and bandwidth requirements will also accelerate or decelerate the adoption of PCIe 4.0 and consumer tech. Next up, consumer electronics and the expected pricing increases. We've been talking about this for a little while now behind the tariffs that have been implemented recently. So a new study commissioned by the Consumer Technology Association, or CTA, highlights just how much price tags are expected to inflate with the $300 billion tariff proposal. And that would include things like phones, tablets, laptops, gaming consoles, so forth, all imported from China. These are expected to rise significantly in cost to the tune of 22% in some cases. We've also spoken with some component manufacturers over the past couple of weeks. There have been layoffs at a few of the companies, some of them not public yet, but uh, EBJ was one that has been publicized at this point. So, a and case manufacturers have been hit with layoffs as well. Though not sure if we can name which ones those are just yet. But layoffs as a result, partially in some cases or entirely in others, of the tariff increase. You'll see price increases for some of the cases on the market to the tune of about 18%. The manufacturers we spoke with are not raising to match the 25% increase for tariffs, so it's going up to 25% tariff now. Uh, they're not matching that for their price adjustments because then no one would buy the product. It would be too expensive. So they're losing some margin, and then they're increasing the price by about 18% in the cases uh, of those case manufacturers we've spoken with. As for the CTA story, phones coming in from China are expected to increase 22% and the new U.S. average cost would rise 14%. According to the report, that translates to a $70 price hike on average. Similarly, prices on notebooks and tablets could rise as much as 21% or $120 and a $50 increase on laptops and tablets, respectively. Gaming consoles would also see a 21% increase in cost as claimed by the CTA report. And then finally, some of the companies are pushing back on the tariffs. So we're reporting on this because it does affect consumer pricing, and that's important to talk about. Companies are starting to come out and show their opposition for the looming tariffs. 
set uh, by the U.S. government. The office of the USTR, U.S. Trade Representative, is currently holding public hearings on the tariff proposals, and companies such as Intel, HP, Microsoft, and Dell are making their positions known. The four companies issued a joint statement that echoes the concerns of the CTA study in that sharp price increases on consumer tech will have serious ramifications for both consumers and U.S. companies alike. The statement goes as far to say that the tariffs could put laptops completely out of reach for the most, quote, cost-conscious consumers. The statement closed by saying that although the tariffs would disproportionately affect all consumers, including small businesses and schools, the most price-sensitive consumer would suffer the most. Separately, Apple and console makers publicly commented on the tariff in a joint letter, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, three companies that you don't often see working together in the console space, uh, noted that the tariffs would do the following. Quote, injure consumers, video game developers, retailers, and console manufacturers, put thousands of high value rewarding U.S. jobs at risk, and stifle innovation in our industry and beyond. Additionally, the letter addresses concerns over the supply chain. Quote, a change in even a single supplier must be vetted carefully to mitigate risks of product quality, unreliability, and consumer safety issues. Tariffs would significantly disrupt our company's businesses and add significant costs that would depress sales of video game consoles and games and services that drive the profitability of this market segment. The letter reads, Apple also filed a comment. Apple stated that the tariffs would not only affect its entire catalog of hardware, but would also affect Apple's status as the, quote, largest corporate taxpayer to the U.S. Treasury. It's quite a, quite a title to hold. This suggested that the tariffs would stand to hinder its economic contributions. Apple also cited the fact that Chinese competitors don't have the same presence in America as U.S. companies have in China, meaning that U.S.-based tech companies would be more affected of the two. And that'll wrap our coverage for the last week of Hardware News. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We'll have a separate behind the scenes video there uh, this weekend actually showing, again, a cane pin thing, but it's cane pin's laziest LN2 delivery setup for when he was on crutches. He, he innovated it. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.